Hello and welcome to another speed coloring video. My name is Amy Schulke and I'm the artist and illustrator at Vanilla Arts Company. You can download the free donut stack digital stamp when you subscribe to the free digi club at vanillaarts.com. The donut stack online class is at markerpainting.com. It's available through 2020. It's forever access and you can work at your own pace. So here's the donut project fully completed and it took me two and a half hours to color. We're starting this project with the cast shadows on the floor of the project. One of the biggest mistakes that colors make when doing white backgrounds is that they leave objects floating weightless on the expanse of white. Cast shadows are essential to realism because they ground your objects, giving them presence and weight. So don't leave out that cast shadow. You'll notice something strange that I'm doing here in this next segment. I'm coloring the donuts almost as if they were in a black and white photograph. This is called underpainting, and while most of my videos include this underpainting process, I don't usually do it all by itself. Normally you might see me add a weird color underneath individual areas, like I'll put gray underneath a leaf, or maybe blue underneath a segment of ribbon that's actually a pink ribbon. But here, I'm doing the whole underpainting all at once, so that you can see what an underpainting looks like without any color distractions. Underpainting is your chance to think about depth and dimension before you get distracted by all your pretty markers and colored pencils. People worry way too much about what colors to use. I get lots of email asking, will this color work or will this marker work? When in fact is the truth is that most colors will work if you do the underpainting stage correctly. The brown that you choose for a donut or the pink that you choose for frosting has very little to do with realism. After all, if you think about frosting, you could tint it any color and it would still look like frosting. What gives you the depth and the realism isn't the color that you use, it's the value or the strength of the colors that you create. Underpainting is a way to ensure that your values will be correct no matter what markers you have in your collection. On this red frosting, you can immediately see what the underpainting is doing for me. I'm only going to use two red markers on this frosting, and yet it's already starting to feel dimensional because the original gray markers are starting to shine through. Realism doesn't come from choosing the perfect red marker. It comes from the value of red that you create. Watch as I do the same thing with two pink markers. I've only got two pink markers and I could have chosen any two pink markers to get this pink frosting because the gray is doing the work for me. If you haven't noticed, I colored dark to light with my Copics. I know most tutorials tell you to work light to dark, but I think there are a lot of problems with that method. The most obvious problem is how much ink you waste base coating everything in a light marker. Then you waste even more ink because you have to color everything twice. First you apply the color and then you have to go back a second time to blend everything. That's way more ink than you need to use. Good blending doesn't come from the order that you color in. Good blends happen when you use a good quality marker paper. I'm using Express It Blending Card here. One coat of each marker is all I need. If you struggle to blend, you need to seriously reconsider what paper you're working on. I cover all of these concepts and more in my online classes. Check out MarkerPainting.com for forever access work at your own pace classes. And if you like a live stream broadcast where you can ask me questions as I color, check me out at Patreon. And now back to those donuts. I want to point out that I'm using a very unconventional blending combination to color the cakey parts of the donut. Remember back, I used two gray markers in the underpainting. Now I'm adding an E brown and two YR gold colors. This set of colors, it's spread across four different Copic marker color families. That's because I choose colors not based upon traditional Copic blending trios. Instead, I'm selecting the colors that I see in a reference photograph. 
when you buy a Copic Trio set, you're buying a blending combination. And while that Trio makes blending easier, it usually kills your chance to color with realism. I don't use the traditional colors because those aren't the colors that I see in real life. Also notice that I change my marker strokes depending upon what it is that I'm coloring. I add texture when the object has a lot of texture, like the cake parts of the donut. But if I'm coloring frosting, or like right now I'm coloring glaze, I want smooth blending there. If I were to color the cake smooth, it would look just like the frosting. Real life has real variety of texture. Go ahead and incorporate that to your coloring for extra realism. I've switched to Statler Tri Plus pens here for the details. Yeah, you could try and do all these teeny tiny sprinkles with a big fat Copic marker, but why would you want to? You can get so much more accuracy if you switch to a smaller pen. Plus, those smaller pens, they're a lot cheaper than individual Copics. Now I'm moving to colored pencils. Everything that I've colored up until this point was simply the base coat. Markers are ooey gooey and wet. They're ideal for filling in broad areas with vibrant color. What Copics don't do as well is add tiny details and help you make minor adjustments. That's why I combine marker with colored pencils. Markers can do a lot but they can't do everything. Switching to the correct tool for the job is not a sign of weakness, it's the smart thing to do. Check out the colors of my pencils. I'm not using any brown pencils on the donuts. I didn't use any pink pencils on the pink frosting, and there are no red pencils on the red frosting. I've already got that color in with the markers. There's no point in coloring over the top of everything a second time with the same color of pencil. In my classes, you'll learn to do what I call pushing and pulling with your colored pencils. We don't recolor anything, we enhance it. So you'll see me using slate gray over a brown marker area, and I use deep purple over reds and pinks. This is what sets my classes apart from regular marker coloring classes. We're doing more than just filling in the spaces with smooth blends and pretty marker combinations. My goal is to get you coloring with good, solid, artistic, painterly techniques. The kind of techniques that as you improve and move towards advanced coloring, these are going to allow you to get incredibly accurate and lifelike realism. Donut Stack is a challenge level class. This class offers the next step for intermediate to advanced colorers, but I've got beginner and introductory level classes too. If you're frustrated with traditional marker classes, if you're looking to advance beyond pretty blending combinations, if your projects look nice but not real, then it's time to take the next step. You can learn to color with realism. You can do this.